Gaming computers with full ATX cases, beefy graphics cards, and full 2U servers and huge server racks are too big. Like, way too big. And while you might say, well, what about micro ATX or ITX builds and compact 1U yes. server chassis? And while, yes, I will agree that these are smaller than the computers that I mentioned earlier, but they are still a lot bigger than the server that we're going to look at today. The Zima Board 832 is a super compact single board micro server that is the jack of all trades when it comes to single board micro servers. Some concerns when it comes to using a micro server is that it may be underpowered or it won't have adequate cooling. But you don't have to worry about any of this with the Zima board. The TDP is only up to 10 watts, which makes the passive cooling more than enough. Also, the Zima board 832 is equipped with an Intel Celeron J3455, which is more than capable of many home server needs with four physical cores, four threads that have a base frequency of 1.5 gigahertz and a burst frequency of up to 2.3 gigahertz. Now, in the topic of Specs. The Zima Board 832 has a total of 8 gigs of LPDDR4 RAM, 32 gigs of onboard storage, and all models of the Zima Board have the Intel HD 500 graphics. But the lack of powerful graphics is okay because servers usually run headlessly, which just means that they don't need a monitor. Now, if you do want to check out more of these specific specs, I will leave a spec sheet down in the description for you guys. But enough talking about this thing, let's actually look at it. So here's the packaging for the Zima board. Let's go ahead and get this thing open here. Well, they give you a nice little note. Let's see what this says. Dear friend, I am Lauren, founder of Ice Whale Tech. Hello, Lauren. Upon receiving this card, please accept my sincere gratitude to you on behalf of the Ice Whale team. Well, no problem, Lauren. Havy McKay once said, none of us get to where we are alone. That's very true. I depend on you guys to watch my videos, so very true. We would not be able to bring Zima board to this world without your attention, support, and trust, whether obvious or subtle, whether harsh or enlightening. Very accepting of you. <laughs> Ice Whale is on a vision to provide creators across the globe with personal clouds that offer faster, safer, and more customized digital experiences. Together with you, we hope to witness significant industrial changes in the coming decades and construct a passionate community around personal servers. For now, I hope you enjoy the time with your time with Zima Board. Sincerely, sincerely, Lauren and Zima Board team. Look at that. We even got a signature. Let's go. That makes me feel important. Good job. <laughs> we got freaking Zima Board stickers. Let's go, dude. I freaking love stickers. Who doesn't love stickers? Okay, so we get the owner's manual. Um, plenty of good stuff in here, I imagine. But we have the Zima Board itself. Very nice, fancy packaging. And we have the power brick that comes with it 12 volt 3 amps let's go ahead and unbox this i guess she okay cool whoa fancy box look at how that opens <laughs> it's like a transformers box <laughs> Okay, and then we have another box. All right, so I'd imagine the Zima board is actually in this one. Okay, yeah. So it comes in a... Oop. Let me turn that around, actually. Just shake it out of there. <laughs> comes in a static bag, or static proof bag. And there she is in the flat. Whoa, you know, that's pretty hefty. This is not what I expected. It's, you know, it's full metal. I'm sure you guys can't hear me tapping on it, but yeah, this is like full metal. This is nice. You can see all the ports on the back and everything. Got your SATA ports up front and PCIe there. I almost couldn't think of it. And you got all your Ethernet, USB, DP, mini DP, and uh, power. Very nice. This is really decent build quality. And I really like the design. I like the, you know, subtle orange right here and the orange outlines and everything. If you guys didn't know, orange is my favorite color and that looks very nice but we do get some accessories focus like this sata cable here this will plug into your sata drive and then it'll go into the uh, zima board so this will be your sata power or no this will be your drive power and this will be your uh, sata data cable and that comes in the box with the zima board we also have a sata y cable come on focus there you go you slide this out of here let's see we have okay so this is for if you want two drives connected so as you can see we we have the uh, two SATA and two SATA on this side as well with um, one drive power. Uh, I don't exactly know how that the power for the drive works if that uh, is chained between them. But as you can see, you can hook up two drives with one cable here. That is super handy because I might actually be using this as a NAS server with like redundant drives. So that would be pretty sick to have. And it also comes with, I'll let it focus first. There we go. It also comes with this 4K HDMI or actually it'll be DisplayPort, mini DisplayPort out and then it'll go out to an HDMI, uh, so you'll have to connect
connect your HDMI here, which will go out to your display. And the last thing that we have in the packaging are these things, which I assume are mounts for something or other. I'm not sure specifically, but they are feel like aluminum or uh, yeah, they feel like aluminum. They're pretty light. And then it comes with some screws as well. Um, yeah, not really much here. So I'm going to go ahead and move on from these. Now, once we've got our power and our ethernet connected, all we have to do is go to HTTP colon slash slash casa OS dot local and that should pull up our server right here since it is natively running casa OS already we'll go ahead and log in and we'll go ahead and just make this casa OS casa OS casa OS you guys should actually create an account I'm just using this as an example so we'll go ahead and click create and just ignore all this crap. Never let Google save your stuff. Get out of here. And we land on our dashboard here. And we can see our CPU usage, our RAM usage, and we can see our onboard storage here. And we can also see our network status down here as well. And we do have a file system here since this is a fork of Debian. So we have a similar file structure here and we have an app store. And this is where we're gonna get all of our stuff to run on our server. You can have anything from AdGuard to a chatbot. You can have a crafty Minecraft server, which is what I personally use for my Minecraft server. We have a uh, file sharing service. Um, you can even run Stable Diffusion on here to generate. It's a AI generative image or image generation, whatever you want to call it. You have more Minecraft stuff like MinOS for server management, MongoDB. So I'm going to go ahead and install Jellyfin right here. And Jellyfin is a open source uh, kind of like free Netflix kind of thing, I guess you could say, where you can throw your files onto the server and then view them from anywhere on your network on any device. It is kind of the same thing as a Plex server, which you're probably more familiar with um, because people like Linus Tech Tips and all of them always talk about Plex servers, but Jellyfin is equally as good in my opinion. Sometimes it can even be better because Plex is known to have some issues. Not saying that Jellyfin is free of issues, just saying that I've only ever heard of issues from Plex and not from Jellyfin. Maybe that's just because less people use Jellyfin. And so once you get to the host, you're just going to want to put in your IP address. This is mine personally, and you want to put 8096 for the port and we're going to go ahead and connect if I can speak correctly. Uh, oh. Looks like we ran into a connection failure. This is just as a uh, example. So I'm not going to fully fledge, you know, configure a Jellyfin server right here and now. But yeah, that should work for you guys once you get this up and running. But I'm going to go ahead and see if we can set up AdGuard Home here. We'll go ahead and get started. We'll just want to listen to all interfaces. Port 80 is fine. It's just telling me where I can find my uh, web interface for AdGuard. Uh, my DNS on port 53. That looks good. All right. We'll go ahead and then into the next snap and for username we'll just do admin and we'll do admin for the password as well again don't do this i'm just doing this as a uh, example and it's not gonna let me do that we'll go next next okay never get out of here next future Braden here, but I wanted to tell you guys that instead of AdGuard Home, I started using Pi-hole, and this is so much easier, and you can see it's actively searching through the queries, and it's blocking them. You can see that from the queries blocked and percentage blocked, it is actually blocking them, and all that you have to do for this, it's super easy. You go to Control Panel, Network and Internet. If you are using Windows 11, this will look like this for you, but if you're using Windows 10, it may look different, and then we'll do Change Adapter Options. We'll right-click here, go to Properties, and you will scroll down till you see this IP v4 and then you'll want to double click on that and as you can see here i have the 192.168.98.228 which is the local address local ip address of the zima board server so once i put that in there or you guys put in your local server you will start to see these queries start jumping up and things start to be blocked and everything and you can test that by going on some different sites and seeing those queries jump up but i just wanted to throw this in here real quick just because that uh ad guard home was not working for me back to past me and if you guys do want to change things like in the terminal there is this application called uh, ttyd bridge that will launch a root access level terminal here where you can type in any command that you may need and maybe you're not able to get to the website or anything like that you can ssh into it you'll have to do ssh root at and then the ip address of your server that should be the command prompt of your computer if you are using windows and it will ask you if you want to ssh in with a fingerprint you'll just type yes then it'll ask you for the password and you put that in and then you should be all set to go all right, guys, so that is pretty much it for the Zima board. If you guys do end up having any issues with it, they do have some support over on their website, which I will leave a link to down in the description. But some main things to check would maybe be your power cable, maybe your ethernet cable. Those two would be the main ones while you're
you're not able to boot or not able to get into Casa OS. But again, make sure to reach out to them if you guys do have any serious issues with this. But I wanted to go over again that this is pretty much the easiest way to get into a home server. I mean, you could build one out of an old computer, but that just seems more cumbersome to me rather than just ordering one single board, hooking it up, and you know, having fun with some home server stuff. My personal thoughts on the Zima Board 832 are pretty positive. I think it is really great. It's a low barrier of entry to people who actually want to start on the home server side of things. The build quality is great. The low power draw means that you can keep electricity costs down as well. Overall, it's just a very positive thing that Ice Whale and them are doing with the Zima Board. I, I really love it and I recommend it very heavily to you guys. And you guys can grab a Zima Board yourselves. I will leave a link down in the description for you guys to go pick pick one up yourself. But that is going to do it for me, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure that you leave a like and subscribe. It helps me out a ton. And leave a comment on some things I should install on my home server or what you guys run on your home servers.